Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Dangerous Method, Movie, Thoughts. I quite liked how you could tell every time Young spoke to one of the others, at least over time, they would affect him. You know, no matter how much he actually believed in his own views and disagreed with some of theirs, he would eventually start to take on some, you know, when he first, early on when he talks to Freud, he, he disagrees and he, he voices a, a small, you know, d dissent. He, he mentions some things that he disagrees with Freud on, but this goes very, very quietly. And then after you know, meeting Otto Gross, he actually, you know, we, we have that nice little para, paranormal sequence with, you know, I felt it, I felt that the wood would, you know, crack there. And he, he openly just disagrees with Freud, you know, right to his face. You know, so you have that, I mean, he could have done that at the beginning of the movie. He might have wanted to, but he didn't feel like he could. But now he met this person who gives in to all his desires. You know, I'm, th I'm trying to figure out if maybe she, Spielein, also affected him in some way, but I'm not entirely sure. But she certainly did talk him into, you know, the, the relationship. I really loved the the bit with, you know, they're, they're talking about her studying to become a doctor. And she's like, you know, now that I, you know, I, I realize there's a lot of sexuality to this doctor stuff. And, you know, it occurs to me that I'm frightfully inexperienced in that field. And, you know, then he, he's like saying something about, oh, you don't have to... Yeah, he has that brilliant line about, you know, they don't expect law students to rob a bank, you know, and then she just goes over and kisses him. And then she has, you know, he's like, well, traditionally the man has, you know, takes the initiative. And then she points out what, you know, will become part of Jung's theory, as far as I recall, at least, that in every man there is some of a woman, and in every woman there is some of a man, you know. And actually my father talked to me about that, I think just before, not long before the movie started, that that was one of Jung's ideas, you know, so I really liked how they worked that in. Because he, at first he's like, well, I don't know, well, yeah, maybe you're right, you know. And then she ties it back into the, you know, with, with the, who takes the initiative, was saying, you know, if you ever feel like taking the initiative, I live right over there. You know, that's this awesome. I liked the changing relationship between Jung and Freud. I, the, it was one of the first things I wondered about if the film would cover when I heard about it, and that it would feature both, excuse me, both of them, if it would, excuse me, go into the, excuse me, the, the break between, as you know, Jung had different ideas than Freud. He did not agree with everything Freud thought. And I like that that was, you know, part of the focus of the film. And again, I think that you know, Gross is part of the reason that Jung had the, the courage to make this break. And really, it was necessary. Because if, you know, 
I quite like several of Freud's theories, but you know when you look at what he said and then you know compare it to some of what has come since, you do also realize that there are some things that he was incorrect about, as is often the case when you first make a discovery. You know, you're not necessarily, you know, it, science is not we get it right the first time. Science is we keep trying and we admit that we're not necessarily completely right the first time, you know. And, yeah, I, I thought that they handled that really well. The... I, I also like the, the relationship between Young and his wife with sort of... She, she kind of just has this feeling that she is supposed to do something to draw him back. You know, the, there's you know, the, the great therapy sequence, one of the best scenes of the film, with, you know, Spielwein and Jung basically, yeah, you know, analyzing her with this, you know, sort of uh, free association, I guess, a, a form of it anyway. And, and, you know, the, the family, unity. Divorce? No. You know, and, and as Spielein points out the pause between, you know, question and answer there. It, but, but yes, it, it felt like she just, she, she seemed to think that she had to do something to draw him back. She wasn't happy with how little time he was spending with her. And you know, and, and what she felt like she could give was a male heir, you know, and, and she was, she, she talked far more about, I mean, granted, for a lot of the film, Young is so restrained that, you know, you could argue maybe he wasn't actually happy with the first two being girls, you know, and he just wouldn't admit it to her. Maybe she did know him better than, you know, maybe he wouldn't admit it, maybe not even to himself. But, you know, what she felt like she could contribute, what she felt like she could offer him was a son, which is, you know, this kind of very traditional image of the woman. And I don't think Young was necessarily in, in agreement with that, you know. And when he met Spielheim, I mean, at first she is just in need of his aid. But then as they get to know each other more, you know, they find that there are all these things where they, they agree. And he, you know, there, there's a rapport there, which, you know, inevitably leads them to attraction, which is also something that can happen in a therapy situation, because you have this, you know, it's, it's a natural thing to be attracted to someone who's trying to help you, especially if it may be the first person who does try to help you, who actively listens to you, and, you know, there are all these emotions being let out, and the other person is actually listening, not telling them to suppress it or complaining about these emotions being let out. But it is also a very dangerous thing to allow a relationship between these two. You know, it, it must be a professional relationship. There, there must not be emotions involved. You know, they can't even be friends, really. It, it has to be a professional relationship because you know in the it's it's not a positive for there to be you know reciprocated emotional attachments between you know patient and therapist anyway back to the film to more specifically the film anyway I as, as I say in the review, 
I really like how the film doesn't take sides. It just offers up these are four different views. Make of, make of them what you will, you know. And, you know, I, I say there are negatives to all. I mean, it's, it's because of Gross that Young actually gives in and goes with Spielwein. And that has consequences, you know, it, I mean, in, in two different scenes, she's devastated by it, and he's devastated by it, you know, by the, the fact that they can't be together, because he is already married, and she later marries, you know, it just, so, so, yeah, you know, very clear consequence to Otto's, you know, view on things, but at the same time, you know, it is debatable, it, you know, could society function if we gave in to our, you know, our desires and lived uninhibited? You know, personally, I would say that at least some inhibitions are required, at least some restraint is required, because not everyone would be able to give in to their you know, sooner or later, what you desire infringes upon someone else's, you know, what someone else owns or what someone else maybe has the more sort of direct right to, you know. But, but yeah, you know, in, in general, I, I think a really good example of this just discussion not taking sides of the different views is, as I already mentioned, the, you know, paranormal sequence at, at Freud's where they, you know, they're, they're discussing and suddenly, you know, you hear the, the creak and Jung insists that he had a, you know, a, a, um, a premonition, a, he, he felt that that would happen. And then he says, it'll happen again in, in just a little bit. And then it does. And it's brilliant because both views are entirely, you know, possible in the film's, you know, reality. There, there is, and, and really, it, everything that happens in the film could have happened exactly the way it happened, you know. There are those who will believe that Jung actually did, you know, have this premonition, or both of them. And there are those that will believe that Freud is right, that no such thing exists, and, you know, it's pure chance, you know. And, the, and, and then a little later, Jung has the premonition of the First World War, you know, and just... Yeah, it's it's really, really compelling. It's the I, I love when a movie allows you to think for yourself, you know. And actually, you know, my father went home after this saying, I'm going to read up on some of these, you know. Both him and I, you know, love psychology. And, yeah, that's, that's what the film makes you want, you, you know. It makes you want to rediscover these, you know, the, these psychologists and their works, and their their, their theories, and I just think that's that's a fantastic thing for a you know an authentic film to do to to make you care so much about these you know these people who actually existed, that after the movie you go on thinking about them and wanting to learn more. I was somewhat surprised that the affair wasn't directly discovered, sort of. The, the, I mean, the, one of the times when Young walks in to her apartment, he doesn't close the door at all. 
like the scene goes on for two minutes or something, he never closes the door. And they're like talking at normal volume levels about their relationship. And I'm just thinking, someone's gonna hear, someone's gonna like pass by the door and hear and see and hey, aren't you Dr. Young? Aren't you married? This isn't your wife, is it? You know, some kind of thing. And then later they're in the boat just out there on the sea. Again, they could easily be spotted. I like how the film works in various of the of the aspects and the theories that these psychologists had. You know, for example, the as I already mentioned, you know, the, this, a little bit of a male in every female, a little bit of a female in every male, which Spielheim suggests to Jung and which he seems to like, as you know, he will later actually suggest that. Excuse me. And I like how the how, how Gross puts forth the idea, which is still, you know, I understand quite. It's it's quite likely that Freud's heavy emphasis on sexuality is because he himself was not having a lot of sex. You know, he. So so yeah, that it, it's likely that that would you know. I mean, yeah, it's the. You, you, you know, we know that if you aren't having a lot of sex, then you're more likely to be extremely focused on it. Or at least if your sex life is unsatisfactory. Not necessarily because you aren't having sex, but just, you know, for various reasons. And, you know, that is also something I would say that, you know, reading Freud, there is a bit heavy focus on sexuality. But, but yeah, I, I really liked how and he, he got to present, Freud got to present his counter-arguments to Jung's theory. Because in places, Jung's theory is, you know, better or at least a good alternative to Freud's. But then there are also points where, yeah, you know, where Freud is maybe right that Jung is also a little too, I don't know the, the word, but, you know... I, just, I like how none of them, n none of these theories or ideas were just completely, you know, either presented as completely good or pretty completely bad. You know, most of them you see, you know, arguments presented against them. And I, you know, I thought it was very credible the way each time there was a possibility of a of an affair between Spielein and Jung. You know, it it happened. I mean, at, at first they have the one, and then he breaks it off after the the letters and the like. And then, you know, she has this what was it a thesis, a like a graduating kind of thing. And they are gonna go over it together, and you know they, they even briefly discuss you. Know, do you think we'll be able to, you know, not have another affair? And they, you know, I think he says like I think so, and she's like I hope so. And then a little later we see them again, you know, and it is just. Yeah, the, it, it's, it makes sense that there is an attraction there. Because again, it, it just didn't seem like there was that much between Young and his wife, you know. She, she just didn't really challenge him. She didn't particularly, you know. I liked the, you know, that there were a couple of sort of suggestions of jealousy between Freud and Jung, with, with you know, Freud jealous of the, of the wealth. You know, he had this, you know, he, he very authoritatively stated, because he, he was sure that his experience 
would be echoed through his students. So he assured Young that he would, in fact, you know, have trouble with money. And then Young informs him, no, oh, my, my wife is quite wealthy. And Freud is, he, he can't even really conceal, you know, that it, it bothers him. He doesn't say anything, but you can see it in his eyes. And a little, a little later, you know, oh, I'm afraid my, my wife, she booked me a first class, you know. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. I like the, the dream interpretation as it went on and how, you know, more or less every time Freud and Jung talked, at, at some point they would discuss something that, you know, became, yeah, some, some kind of symbolism, you know, the, the, and, and finally we have the symbolism of, I'm going to get his name wrong, I'm, I'm on something, you know, erasing his father's name, and Jung disagreeing with Freud about that, and and then Freud, you know, I, I noticed that my name wasn't on the, you know, this authority thing of, you know, he's, he's rebelling against the father figure. As I mentioned in the review, there's this great fluid relationship between who is the therapist and who is the patient, which I find quite credible. I think it's very difficult for anyone to be entirely only receiving help or only giving help. You know, it's, it's it, healthy human relations is give and take. It's not entirely one or the other, you know. Anyone who only gives is going to be taken advantage of and anyone who only takes is going to find themselves, you know, very friendless, you know. So, it, yeah, it, it just naturally, if, if you're at all a stable human being, you're probably at some point going to, you know, more or less swap roles with, you know, the other person in that, you know, therapist-patient relationship. And I liked how the, you know, for, for example, Gross, you know, he, he comes, he, he checks in. He's supposed to be the patient of Jung, but Jung becomes his patient, you know. And I think, I, I quite like the characterization. I think he really makes an impact. Like I said in the review, I would have loved to have seen more of the character. You know, he really just dominates the screen when he's uh, in the film, Kessel. It just, right from when you first see him, it's just, yeah, this guy's uninhibited. You know, like the, the very first thing you see, he's taking, you know, some cocaine. Then a little later, he's, you know, he's in Young's office for the first time. They've just barely been introduced properly. And he's like, okay, well, I'm not going to sit down anymore. And he walks over, he, he swipes some pills, he touches stuff and, you know, shakes stuff and just... And, and at the same time, we have Young just sitting there, you know, clearly it bothers him. But he doesn't say anything because, again, he, he is this very... I don't know, maybe people-pleasing is the right word? He's, he's not very aggressive of a person, you know. That was probably the strongest of the sort of, you know, character establish, establishments is, and, and introductions of, of sorts. Although I do, I would also say you really got a feel for both who Freud, well, both, for Freud, Spielein, and Jung, who, who they were and what they were driven by. And I really love that, you know, Kira Knightley really got to play this multifaceted character. I mean, she starts out just devastated by her mental illness, 
but over the course of the film, she gets to be more and more, you know, of a dominant presence. She's she's really smart, you know, she's very perceptive. I mean, she figures out that it's his wife in, in the in the therapy scene, you know, and, and that whole the thing and, and all the things that she deducts without really knowing anything about what you know, she has no idea who this woman is. And, you know, she's just, oh, I noticed that and that and that. She's your wife, isn't she? It's just, you know, really, really smart. And which is also part of what really appealed to him. I also thought her accent was impeccable. I mean, Russian accents are really often terrible. But I, I really, yeah, I have a, a whole new respect for her as an actress. I suppose there's not much else to say. Yeah, I believe that is it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.